Interbase, the choice of leading OEMs the world over, is ideal for silent installation thanks to being a fast, admin-free and highly secure database. Let's see how you can add the reliability of Interbase to your applications in minutes. Well, uh, the Interbase install is a, is a very uh, clean and uh, easy install. Uh, so on our documentation side, we have uh, links uh, to go get the information about installation. And you can customize your installation um, using the property values that are mentioned in the documentation right there. What we'll look at today is just a sample of how to get that done. So in this directory, uh, I have just collected the Interbase installer. This is our Interbase Windows installer, 64-bit server edition. And then we have two other files. Um, the reg ib2020 demo.txt is a license file, uh, which includes all the license attributes of Interbase that you can use. Uh, typically, this would be a 25 user license or a one user license or an unlimited user license or whatever the license is, it is that you have as per your war agreement with uh, Interbase. And the other file, Interbase custom install values, you can name this file anything, uh, but I just named it Interbase custom install values, so it's self explanatory. Uh, this is uh, just a properties file for the installer. When you run the installer in silent mode, you can posit this properties file and it will install interbase where you want it installed and with the parameters that you want. So let's just quickly go through the properties. Uh, you're asking the installer to be run in silent mode and you want it to be installed um, under your own folder. Uh, of course, by default, I'm using Embarcadero interface and given it a name uh, so that it's distinguishable from other instances of interbase that may be present on the system. Uh, your customer may be using another third-party application that has its own interbase uh, embedded so you want to definitely identify your interbase instance with the name you, you can give this any name you can you want to install your interbase instance with the name of your application uh, so that you know uh, that that instance belongs to your application um, for the purpose of this demo i just call the instance uh, ib2020 demo and um, that's how I would identify that as an instance name as well. So Interbase can be a multi-instance uh, on your system, on any system. You can have multiple versions of Interbase running, each within its own silo, uh, and uh, each serving a particular class of applications or a, a particular set of applications from another WAR or ISV. Uh, the instance name is something that's mandatory uh, if you are inst installing it as a multi-instance. Um, slip file name is the license file that I alluded to uh, that you got from Embarcadero. Uh, you will need to specify the absolute path name where the license resides. So the installer picks this license and installs it into the right interface folder once it's done with the install. Uh, typically, a uh, server edition customer would uh, choose an install set of server and client. So this is a server and client uh, install set. If you just wanted to install the interface client on some of the desktops where you have your application, if there are multiple users connecting to a single server in the backend in, in your uh, intranet, for example, or within the department, they have one server instance of interface installed, but they want to have multiple clients installed on each one of those desktops that users are using your application on, what you would do is you would install the server uh, install set on the backend uh, system. And then you would change this to client uh, for all the desktops where you're installing Interbase. So the client uh, part of it will only install the uh, client libraries that are required on those uh, desktops. And uh, the, your application will be able to connect to the uh, remote uh, server that's running in the backend. But for the purpose of this demo, we are going to install the full Interbase product. Um, server TCP port is the TCP port uh, socket uh, ID that it would be listening to. You can put any number out here. Just make sure that that number is unique to your uh, use. You don't want to be uh, colliding with some other application that is using that uh, TCP port. Uh, Interbase by default uh, installs with TCP port 3050. So if I am a war, I would definitely try and avoid using that TCP port because you can have a developer or somebody else was installed the default instance with 3050. So you want to identify a TCP port that is unique to your uh, application. A multi-instance is something that we already spoke. Yes, this instance needs to be a uniquely identifiable multi-instance. Uh, you are installing the English language version of Interbase. 
uh, we do provide a Japanese edition kit as well. So for customers in Japan, they may choose to um, say language is Japanese. So uh, thereby the right documentation set is installed and such. Uh, we do want this installed to be available system wide, uh, not just to a single user. And this is the important one uh, parameter that you would set reg equals false. Reg equals false meaning you do not want this install to kick off the registration process. You already have provided a license file that's embedded with your uh, install. So you do not want any um, extens uh, you do not want any extra registration to happen for that license. And architecture that you're choosing is a 64-bit architecture. Uh, if you were using any of the older Windows platforms, which have only 32-bit editions, uh, so you can also run the 32-bit architecture of Interbase if you wanted to do that. But for this demo, we are using the 64-bit architecture. So all you would do here is run this installer now. Now that you have the properties file, you will just run the installer uh, with the file parameter and give the custom attributes file. Agree that you want to run that. Um, so Windows operating system will um, just install the properties. What this does is the installer will go through and do all of the steps because you've already given it details about where it needs to install it and what license file it needs to uh, install within that and how it needs to identify itself. So the installer goes through all the setup uh, behind the scenes. We're going to take a look at uh, the folders just to uh, illustrate where it has actually installed. The location where you wanted to install Interbase was Interbase underscore IB2020 underscore demo, right? So you will see that the install is already completed and it has installed Interbase. You, it has, you have the binaries and the documentation files and everything else installed right here. Uh, just as you would do when you're installing it as a UI. Uh, the documentation is installed by default um, and all of the files out here, there's a, the one thing that you may want to take a look at if you wanted to is there's an install log file which details uh, what the installer did. So if you wanted to analyze that or send that back, uh, if there are any complications, you, you will use this install log file uh, to see where it is installed and if it ran into any particular problem. Um, well, it's pretty quick, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> so, you know, the, yeah. just literally, uh, we saw the command line return back that it was done within what under ten seconds. So uh, here's, here's the proof, right? It, the installer began at two eighteen fifty five and it finished at two nineteen twelve. That's about seventeen, 17 seconds. 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 My that's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh my! Um, so that's that's what it does. And the one additional file that I would probably just want to show here today is. The license file that you ask the installer to use when installing the product, it basically copied the license file automatically uh, to the interbase license folder. So right out of the bat, it's it's copied the license that you wanted to to deploy, and now we'll also see where it has installed. So interbase um, by default on Windows has two different areas. One is a, a program install uh, area for program files, and Windows is uh, pretty strict on having writable files uh, by user. So it puts the right, uh, interface puts the writable files in the program data area automatically. You do not have to give it where it needs to go. If we decide based on the uh, name of the instance that you have installed, we go ahead and create a folder underneath uh, the program data folder and all of those writable files are kept here. So your user authentication database and your examples and your license files are all writable. So they go into this uh, program data uh, hierarchy. Um, as you will notice out here in the license folder, here's where your license is. It got automatically installed by interface. So that completes our install picture. 